Kwan. Hi, I'm Mike Lemieux. Some of you know me as Mikey or Giddy Up Mikey. And I'm the author of this book here called Dude, Where's My Jesus Fish? And here today to discuss some things that came up on my recent trip uh, to Idaho pertaining to the disappearance of the universe and A Course of Miracles. Uh, I was out there in Idaho. Uh, it was my first ever visit to Idaho, to the state of Idaho. Uh, I was out there for about 10 days, and one of those days I attended a Gary Renard and Cindy Laura Renard workshop, and so that was pretty cool. And uh, had dinner with them afterwards and got into some discussions and had discussions with other people during my stay in Idaho too, so I just thought I'd throw out some stuff that came up for me. Um, during my trip there, um, one thing I had mentioned uh, to Gary and Cindy about the disappearance in the universe was that um, when I was first told about it, um, I didn't really want to read it <laughs> because the word Ascended Masters came up. And I had done the self-help movement, the New Age buffet line stuff. And then I kind of graduated onto books about ascension and enlightenment and ascended masters and archangels and all that. And I was kind of just burnt out on that topic. And especially when it's channeled and you get this airy fairy language of everything's love and light. And it's like, I just got to the point where you just shut the fuck up about that sort of stuff. You know, I just, I just had enough of that. And, um, Anyway, what saved Gary, I told Gary, this is what saved you. <laughs> um, he put excerpts of Disappearance on his website. So, though I didn't feel inclined to want to read this book, I went on the website when I was told about it that evening, and when I read the, read the excerpts, I was like, wow, these Ascended Masters speak my language. I am down. Get me a copy of that. And uh, ordered your immortal reality, too. And um, obviously, I'm glad I did. <laughs> Um, anyway, the, th the three major things that came out of me, came out of Disappearance of the Universe for me was one, was the forgiveness process. It gave me a much more simplified way of applying forgiveness in your life. Um, I was kind of already doing work, well I was doing work on my unconscious skill prior to reading Gary's books and prior to the course, although I didn't refer to it as conscious, as unconscious guilt at the time. Um, uh, through these guided meditations I was doing. It's just time consuming and complex. And so Gary's books gave me a simplified way of dealing with my uh, unconscious guilt on the spot. So that was the one major thing that I got out of Disappearance of the Universe. Number two was uh, the idea that God didn't create the world and the universe. Because, you know, I've said this many times that uh, prior to that I hadn't gotten that memo <laughs> uh, that God didn't create the world and the universe. And Number three was probably what I'm as equally, if not more grateful for than the other two things, is that they were pretty uh, straightforward when it, about other teachings. So they talked about um, energy and consciousness and abundance and being in the now and all these popular topics you hear in the New Age community. And with all those studies I had done up until that point, I learned a lot and applied a good part of it, but it, was also, it also left me confused and conflicted uh, about everything I learned and kind of frustrated too. So when I in person put all those things out there in Gary's books, I know Gary got a lot of flack for that, and I do too when I share any of that stuff in Gary's books out on social media, but that's one of the things I'm most grateful to them for because that's, it just cleared everything up for me. So I'll be ever, forever grateful to Arne Persa for that. And I know it's not, it wasn't popular, but it helped me a lot. Um, which is why I do share that stuff on social media from time to time. And it's not to offend anybody, it's not to uh, put down anybody that's into that sort of stuff. It's just that I've, I just got to a point where I outgrew that sort of thing, and everyone will at some point, um, because it is a limited teaching, those, those kinds of things. And I'm like Arnon and Persa just want to help people save time and that's the only motivation that Arnon and Persa have for pointing out those things, you know. They say, um, uh, there's not exactly uh, an oversupply of people willing to point these things out, so they have to make these controversial statements. Um, because there aren't an oversupply of people in the world or in the 
spiritual community or the Course in Miracles community willing to point these things out. So somebody's got to do it, you know. Like Gary said, it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> um, anyway, when I was reading it, and it's like, it's about freaking time somebody told me the goddamn truth. That's how I felt when I was reading it. I know some people felt Art and Percival being self-righteous and arrogant. I didn't get that at all. I was like, finally. Thank you, God. Somebody's telling me the truth for once. That's how I felt. So I, you know, I shared that with Gary and Cindy, something like that. Just, you know, let them know, man. That that was huge help for me uh, when they when they talk about those sort of things. Um, and I, I know it's not a popular thing uh, amongst some course people, but or you know, people in the spiritual community, but. It was a huge help to me, so that's why I like to occasionally share that on social media. Because if it was helpful to me, it's probably going to be helpful to somebody else, too. So, um, And you know, they mention in the books, they do mention about Marianne Williamson, about how she doesn't necessarily teach the Course the way the Course is meant to be interpreted. And same thing with Eckhart Tolle, although I don't think he's ever claimed to teach the Course, and Art and Persa certainly aren't saying that he's claiming to teach the Course. Um, but I think a lot of people in the spiritual community seem to think Eckhart Tolle and the Course Miracles is the same kind of teaching. And so what I did about four or five, I think it was, well, it was probably five or six years ago, I forced myself, <laughs> I didn't really force myself, uh, to read Marianne Williamson's Return to Love, which is allegedly about A Course of Miracles, but um, it's really about her limited interpretation of the Course. Um, obviously she's a helpful person in the world. I will never knock somebody for that because everyone's at where they're at. Um, my, only, my only thing is that if you're going to teach the course, know what you're talking about. And there's so many people, it's not just her, there's a ton of people out there um, claiming to be teachers of A Course of Miracles when they don't quite get it because they haven't really learned the course. <laughs> and I don't, you know, don't want to put anybody down or, or sound like sound like I'm being arrogant and fool myself, but it's a pretty hardcore teaching. I mean, it's telling you that you don't really exist as an individual and that the world never happened. I mean, people don't want to hear that, but that is what Jesus is teaching in the Course. Um, you know, and I did the same thing with Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now. I forced myself to read that book, too. Uh, in fact, I did Amazon reviews for both of these books and, uh, in 2012 or 2013. I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, I'll find those uh, reviews and I'll post the links to those in the description section for this video that I'm doing now. So if you want to take a look at that, you can. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, part of my other point is people in the course community will get offended by some of the things Art and Perso is saying in uh, Gary's books. But if they really want to be offended, uh, they should be offended by Jesus in the Course. I mean, he's constantly making comparisons throughout the 1,300 pages of the Course. You know, he's, he's saying, he's saying you know, my way of thinking is right, and your way of thinking is really screwed up, and, um, but I'm here for you when you decide to change your mind. <laughs> I mean, that's what he's saying in the Course. He puts it a little more gently than that, but that's what he's saying. Um, in fact, he says at one point, you know, the Holy Spirit must teach through teach through comparisons and uses opposites to point to truth. And that's exactly the same deal Art and Person do in uh, Gary's books. Um, so, if, like I said, if people want to be offended by Art and Person, they should be offended by Jesus, too. <laughs> um, anyway, like Art and Person say, we don't mean to de be disrespectful, but we have to make these certain controversial statements, because, uh, like I said earlier, there's not an oversupply of people in the Course of Miracles community or the spiritual community or the world, whatever you want to say, uh, who are willing to point these things out. So someone's got to do it. And I'm more than happy to help Gary and Cindy with that because there's nobody out there on the road, that, from what I can tell, that sticks to pure non-dualism. Um, I have a great amount of respect for uh, Ken Wapnick, Dr. Kenneth Wapnick. Um, but I never felt drawn uh, to explore his work, but I have a great amount of respect for that man, for sure. And I do like to give an occasional shout out to for Alex Marchand's The Universe is a Dream comic books, because that's I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, but other than that, uh, you know, well, <laughs> I'll get back to that. Uh, <laughs> oh, right. I know what I wanted to do. To do. Uh, so, this came up 
in Idaho. I guess there's going to be a big Course in Miracles conference in Boston, Massachusetts next spring. And I'm originally from Massachusetts, so it would be a good excuse for me to go back and visit family and all that stuff. Um, which I haven't done in quite a long time. Actually, it's been about 10 years since I've been back to Massachusetts. But I grew up in Massachusetts on the South Coast, and I, I worked in Boston, Boston metropolitan area during my 20s before I moved out west. Um, so it would be a perfect opportunity to do that, but I don't know. It's like I have attended conferences in the past. Uh, in 2009, I attended the uh, conference in San Francisco that they had. Um, I didn't go because I I wanted to hear about other people talking about the course, I just went because, well, I had never been to San Francisco for one thing, so I wanted to explore the city a little bit. And I had a free place to stay, so um, that was going to help with the financial aspect of it. Um, so I did that in 2009 for the experience, and it was kind of a mixed bag <laughs> uh, being at the conference. Both good and not so great, but uh, 2011, I did go back to San Francisco for that same conference because uh, this time I, my Jesus Fish book, I just, I was just putting it, uh, just getting it published, although I hadn't gone live on Amazon yet, uh, but I had uh, copies for pre-sale, I guess if you want to call it pre-sale, and so I brought copies with me and that worked out well, get some sold walls there and trace some bugs or whatever, and um and then in 2012, I went to a conference, not the same type of conference as different hosts, um, out in Colorado. Uh, it was one of those deals where I've never been to Colorado. I was offered a free ticket, had a free place to stay, so I was like, hey, why not? But of the, of the three conferences I attended, that, was, that one was probably the weirdest one, because I don't know, people were, one of the presenters were having the people make noises and stuff. It was just like, I remember thinking, uh, what the hell does this have to do with the course? <laughs> no, no. Uh, anyway, <laughs> but... Uh, what else was I going to say about the Course in Miracles conference? Yeah, so I don't know about going to Boston. I'm not likely to do that because I don't see the point in plopping down $400, $500, $600, whatever it costs to go to attend this conference to hear a bunch of people talk about something that know less than me about. So <laughs> I know that might sound arrogant, but it's the truth. <laughs> so I don't foresee me attending this conference. Uh, Anyway, <laughs> the other thing too is, outside of Gary and Cindy, I don't really trust anybody with the message of the course. Um, I don't trust people to be conscientious enough, spiritually aware, spiritually mature enough, um, adamant and headstrong enough and uh, humble enough to really stick to the pure non-dualistic nature of A Course of Miracles. Um, I mean, it's a radical teaching. People don't want to hear that there is no world and that you don't exist as an individual. And that's how Gary and Cindy present the course. Um, sure, you can have your individuality while you appear to be here in a body, but uh, you just can't believe it's true. Um, you know, some course teachers still want to glorify the soul. And the soul is an individual identity, uh, which has nothing to do with God. Um, God didn't create individual souls. You know, it, when it comes to enlightenment, we eventually have to decide for either God or individuality. And God is the only thing that's going to make us happy. Our individuality, will, being an individual soul, is just going to keep us separate and unfulfilled. Um, and, you know, another thing, too, I've been asked over the years why I'm not out there on the road uh, teaching A Course of Miracles and presenting A Course of Miracles. And, well... A couple of, a couple of reasons why is one, uh, the opportunity's never presented itself to make that happen, and I've certainly never felt guided and inspired to try to make that happen. So right there um, is a good reasons why I haven't done that, and I don't know if I would do that in the future or not. Um, I don't know how Gary and Cindy do it actually, how you talk all day. And then, you know, socializing at lunchtime, socializing at dinner time. I don't think I could talk for more than 30 minutes straight, frankly, physically. I don't know if I could do that. So, but the other thing, too, is even if I could do all that and, and I felt inspired to make that happen, I don't think the Course of Miracles community could handle another Gary Renard <laughs> when it comes down to it. So, 
Um, so those are good reasons why I'm not do out there doing it. I'll, I'll stick to my day job. Let Gary and Cindy handle <laughs> handle telling people that they don't exist as an individual soul <laughs> and that there is no world and only God is real. Uh, of course, at the same time, you know, we don't have to give anything up. We don't have to give anything up physically. We don't have to give up our identities, but we just can't believe it's true. It's all about releasing our psychological, psychological attachment to it all. Um, anyway, I don't say all this to uh, make myself sound like I'm enlightened, because I hardly am. As, as uncompromising as I am when presenting the message on my YouTube videos or on Facebook or Twitter or what have you, uh, I'm not nearly as uncompromising when it comes to the application of it. I wish I was, but I'm not there yet. Uh, I'm hoped to be before this lifetime, this Mikey is over, but I don't know. I might need another eight lifetimes for all I know. <laughs> Some days it sure feels that way. Other days I feel like, yeah, I can, this is doable in this lifetime, but other days forget about it. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm up Shit's Creek some days. You know, case in point, uh, during the trip to Idaho, uh, I got two flat tires on two separate days. It was just the weirdest thing because I never get flat tires. And I took a rental car out there. Uh, I didn't want to bring my own rig out there. I just decided, eh, I'll get a rental car. Um, so between Ashland, Oregon and Boise, Idaho, there is a ton of middle of nowheres, okay? So my first flat tire happened within a half, about a half a mile from the airport in Boise. So that worked out well because um, yeah, I was a little frustrated. It, you know, it took away from my evening, but um, at the same time, I was like, you know what? Just be grateful that I didn't. This didn't happen out in the middle of nowhere, because I'm not the kind of guy that's going to change a tire. You know, as I like to tell people, I'm not a real man. <laughs> you know, although I do pee standing up, but <laughs> that's just not my thing. So, uh, you know, get, I'm the kind of guy that calls roadside assistance <laughs> so the rental car can, company can deal with it. So they come and they put the donut on and I just drove up the road to the airport and got the car exchanged. And um, so that worked out okay. I handled it, actually handled it rather gracefully if I may say so myself. However, the second flat tire happened the day I was leaving Boise. And I'm on the freeway and about 10 miles out, tire blows. And I'm like, you gotta be shitting me. <laughs> Another flat tire. And uh, anyway, that whole thing turned into a cluster because the tow truck guy arrived to pick up the car, but I also got a text saying from the rental car company that they were also deliver me a car. But the tow truck guy said, no, I didn't hear anything about that. So he's like, come with me. I was like, okay, I don't wanna be left there on the highway. So, um, so I got in the truck with him, went to the, the airport and so I went to the rental car company there, and they're saying, oh, we just delivered your car up to, up to the freeway. I'm like, hey. okay, so they had to go find me a new car now, and then they finally did, and then um, they couldn't find the key, so they had to find the key, and the whole thing just took, turned into like a two, two and a half hour process, so I was, I was a bit frustrated. I mean, I didn't take it out on anybody on that. I'm always mindful not to snap at people, even if I'm internally feeling uh, peeved or... Uh, frustrated. I, I don't want to do that to anybody because it, it wouldn't reflect well on me for one thing. Plus, I just don't want to put anybody through that. Um, so I'm very usually very conscientious not to do something like that. But um, but internally, I'm like, I just want to get on the road and go home because it's a long drive. And I didn't want to get home very late. And I ended up getting home like 10 at night, which is much later than I wanted to be home by. But uh, anyway, and the other thing too that added to my frustration, for some reason, when I plug in uh, the phone into the USB outlet, for some reason, the phone wouldn't charge. So I was just, I threw it, basically I threw a tantrum like a three-year-old, you know. I, if, I, if there was somebody in the car with me, I would have had a little more self-control, but since nobody was there, I just let it loose. <laughs> and uh, so I, the point is, I, I don't claim to be enlightened by any means. <laughs> you know, I'm very uncompromising when it comes to putting the message out there, because I think that's the only way for me to be truly helpful to people. I don't want to confuse people. Um, and put a conflicted message out there. You know, Jesus is very consistent in the course. Art and Purse are very consistent. And Gary and Cindy are very consistent carrying forward Art and Purse's message and Jesus' message. And I just want to stick to that plan. Um, but like I said, when it comes to applying it, I wish I was more, I wish I was as uncompromising as implying it to my life, but I'm not. And I just keep working at it, you know. 
Um, the, Jesus tells us in the Course to forgive yourself your madness and all uh, senseless journeys and goalless aims. Um, they have no meaning. So that's what I had to do, forgive myself my madness that day. And eventually I did. Um, you know, Ken Wapnick says, which is quoted in the fourth book, um, that a good course student is a bad course student who forgives himself. So those are things I had to keep in mind on my drive home and eventually calm down. <laughs> Plus there was so much beautiful scenery on the way that kind of distracted me from my frustration or the experience I had and, you know, stopping to take pictures and stuff. Cause I had never been anywhere, anywhere out that part of the world, uh, that part of the country before. So uh, it was all new to me. So I was taking it in. So that helped the cause. <laughs> yeah, I know the world's not real, but I still like to enjoy it and stuff, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, the other thing too, that's come up for me since the release of this fourth book. And I don't know if it's because it got name dropped by Arton in the book, but a few people have asked me, you know, Mike, are you the reincarnation of Helen Schuckman? And I was like, wow, well, I didn't, I never thought of that because, uh, just hadn't because I don't have her intellectual capacity. <laughs> so for one, for one thing, I was born, from a linear perspective of time, I was born in 1974. Helen Schuckman didn't pass until 1981. So I think from that linear perspective of time, that would rule me out. Um, besides that, like I said, I don't have the intellectual, I didn't have her, yeah, I don't have her intellect, her education level. Um, and that's certainly not something I have in this lifetime. You know, she was a research psychologist at Columbia University. Me, I, I have a... So, I have a degree, a two-year degree from a community college. <laughs> you know, that's the extent of my level of education. Um, and not to mention, to top it all off, you know, I identify more with Beavis and Butthead than I do William Shakespeare. So, <laughs> um, if that doesn't rule me out, I don't know what would. So, I, I'm disqualified from being Helen Shockman's reincarnation. So, uh, oh, and this reminds, this reminds me of a Seinfeld episode. Um, there was one episode where George Costanza was going off about something, he was getting all crazy, and Jerry Seinfeld says to him, you know, George, they're doing wonderful things in mental institutions these days, so, <laughs> so I, I, there you have it. <laughs> so I, I think it's a good indication that maybe I should seek some mental health treatment one of these days. <laughs> but um, I think that's about all I wanted to say. Um, I'm just going to go through my notes real quick to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, I don't think I did, so I think that would be a good spot to end this, and uh, yeah, we'll just end it there. All right, uh, thanks for listening or watching. All right, get it up. Haha. <laughs>